What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here. In today's video, we are going to be going over how each Charge With Light mod works in Destiny 2. This is part of a three-part series where I will be breaking down every mod in the game aside from Raid or Nightmare Hunt mods. We have a lot to go over, so let's jump right into it. The first mods we will go over are the general mods. There are four in total, three to help you gain stacks of Charge With Light, and one that consumes stacks of Charge With Light. The first one we will be looking at is Taking Charge. Taking Charge can be applied to any armor piece for 3 energy and it allows you to become charged with light by picking up an orb of power. This mod also works in PvP. You can create orbs of power by getting double kills with masterwork weapons or by having a teammate slay out with a super which will create many orbs of power. When you pick up the orb you will become charged with light. Super simple. You can hold a maximum of 2 charges of light without any additional mods. Bungie recently stated that orb generation on multi-kills will no longer be a function of masterwork weapons, but instead will be provided by a helmet armor mod and will apply the orb generation effect to all weapons you have equipped of a particular damage type. It also states that this applies to a kinetic weapon with a perk like osmosis, which if you don't know will give it an element matching your subclass whenever you throw a grenade. To me, this means that kinetic weapons won't be able to generate orbs at all, but I may be wrong about that. Regardless, the perk Taking Charge takes a big hit from this change, because now you need an armor mod to make orbs instead of just a masterwork weapon, and these weapons have to be of the same damage type. Regardless, that does not change how Taking Charge works in any way. You pick up an orb of light, and you become charged with light. The end. In PvE, another great way to gain stacks of charge with light is Shield Break Charge. This mod can also go on any armor piece, and it only costs 1 energy. This will charge you with light when you break a combatant's shield with the matching energy type. This works with grenades and melee abilities as well as weapons that match a shield type. However, it does not work with weapons that do not match the element type, and this includes the exotic linear fusion rifle Arbalist. Additionally, something I just found out while testing is breaking a barrier champion's shield does not proc shield break charge. I mistakenly thought that it did, but I tested this a number of times and never got it to proc, so that is definitely good to know for the future. The next Charge With Light activating perk we'll look at is Empowered Finish. This mod only costs 1 energy to apply and it will give you a stack of Charge With Light when you perform a finisher on an enemy at the cost of 1 tenth of your super. And that is it for the Universal Charge With Light mods that can apply to any armor element that will help us gain stacks. Now let's look at the only Universal mod that consumes Charge With Light. This is the mod High Energy Fire. This mod works in PvE and PvP and is super great in basically any scenario. Here, I am in a lost sector shooting the boss without high energy fire and doing 2394 to the head and 1411 to the body. I then become charged with light and hit for 2872 to the head and 1694 to the body. This is a 20% buff to damage. And as the perk states, each defeated combatant consumes one stack of charged with light. So if you are doing damage to a boss, you could have it for the duration of the fight as long as you are not killing adds with your weapons. Sadly, this perk does not stack with things like Well of Radiance or Weapons of Light those mods will actually override your high energy fire. But this mod is still really good and has great utility. And that's it for the universal charge with light mods. We'll move on to all the solar mods next because I want to touch on two mods right off the bat that can really help charge with light builds. And these mods are charged up and supercharged. Charged up costs two energy and allows you to hold an additional stack of charge with light. It also says that this mod's effect stacks with other copies of this mod. So one of these mods will allow you to hold 3 charges of light, 2 mods will allow you to hold 4, and 3 mods will allow you to hold 5 stacks of charge with light. And as previously mentioned, the other mod is supercharged, which costs 5 energy to apply. It allows you to gain 2 additional stacks of charge with light, up to a maximum of 5. So the common setup to run is 1 charged up and 1 supercharged mod, which will allow you to hold 5 stacks of charge with light instead of just 2. So that's how we hold additional light stacks, Let's go over all the solar mods that help us gain stacks of charge with light. And then after that, we'll go over all the solar mods that consume stacks of charge with light. We'll then do the same thing for the void and arc mods. So next, let's look at sustain charge. This perk states that you become charged with light by rapidly defeating combatants with auto rifles, trace rifles, or machine guns. Additional copies of this mod increase the time allowed between combatants that are defeated. As with holster mods, this was quite hard to test. With any of these mods, I will not go over the duration that it grants. Obviously, it extends the time between kills, but after much testing, I do not feel confident giving you the time allowed between kills. It was too tough to get a proper measurement. However, I will say that I wouldn't recommend running more than one of these mods. With just one of the mods active, it consistently took 3-4 to four kills to get us a stack of charge with light. 
This mod would be great in lower end content where you can chew through ads, but it probably isn't as good in high end content where it is harder to chain kills on enemies. However, if you are using a machine gun for ad clear, then this could be a viable strategy. But chances are an auto rifle just isn't going to take out ads quick enough in high end content to get this to proc consistently. But this is great in lower end content. Also, there does not seem to be a cooldown on this perk if you are mowing down ads. If you take out 6 to 8 enemies in very quick succession, you are going to get 2 stacks of charge with light very consistently. The other solar mod that grants us stacks is Blast Radius. This allows us to become charged with light by rapidly defeating multiple combatants with grenade launchers or rocket launchers. And it says this mod's effect stacks with other copies of this mod. In my testing, I would usually get a stack of charge with light when I got 2 grenade launcher kills when I had just one of these mods equipped. But when I had 4 of the mods equipped, a couple times I gained 2 stacks of charge with light by killing just one enemy. That is absurd. So yes, stacking them does work. But because rockets and GLs are so good at ad clear anyways, I really don't think it is worth running more than one of these mods. This is an extremely strong mod, especially if you are using something like Wither Horde. You will be charged with light more often than not with this mod. Also, Galahorn has great ad clear as well, so it could also pair quite well with this mod. I was extremely impressed with this mod after doing my testing and I strongly recommend it. Next, a mod that could pair very well with Blast Radius is Argent Ordnance. This mod states that while charged with light, readying or firing a rocket launcher grants it increased damage and reload speed. Damaging a combatant with a rocket consumes one stack of charge with light. And it says this mod's effect stacks with other copies of this mod. So when we are charged with light, it will give us a buff called God Slayer Warheads. And the damage is dependent on the number of mods you have applied. So one mod will buff the damage by 20%, two mods will buff the damage by 25%, and three and four mods buff the damage by 35%. Therefore, it is not worth running more than three. Additionally, this mod does not stack with things like Weapons of Light or Well of Radiance. On this topic, no buffs in the game stack aside from two specific mods that we will get to later in this video. Those are Font of Might and Power of Rasputin, but we will go over those later. But for now, just know that any of these mods will not stack with things like Weapons of Light or Well of Radiance, at least at the time of this video. These are subject to change in Witch Queen. Anyways, back to this mod, the other thing you need to know about it is that it only consumes your stack of charge with light if you deal damage. If you shoot a rocket that hits nothing and deals no damage, you will retain your buff. The next mod is Firepower, which states while charged with light, regain a portion of your grenade energy when you use your grenade, consuming one stack of charge with light. This is a very cool mod as the effects stack depending on how many mods you have equipped. So one stack just gives you a bit of energy back, but four mods gives you over 50% of your grenade energy back. So if you have a grenade focused build, this mod can be extremely powerful. And one final thing to note about this mod is I did test it and this mod does not stack with things like grenade kickstart. The next mod could pair very well with firepower and that is heal thyself. This mod states that while you are charged with light, grenade funnel blows heal you and consume one stack of charge with light. And again, this mod's effect stacks, so the more mods you have, the more health you get back upon a grenade kill. This is a pretty niche mod, but it could be good in the right build. And speaking of niche mods, that brings us to the final solar mod which is Kindling Flame. While charged with light, reviving a downed guardian gives you a burst of healing, consuming one stack of charge with light. This mod's effects also stack. So very similar to Heal Thyself, the more mods you have equipped, the more healing you will get after the revive. This mod is decent at what it does, but what it does is very niche and probably never really worth running. And that is it for the Solar Charge with Light mods. We'll now take a look at the Void Charge with Light mods, starting again with the mods that help us gain stacks of Charge with Light. We'll start with a very universal mod which is Charge Harvester. This mod states that while you are not charged with light, any killer assist has a small cumulative chance to cause you to become charged with light. This mod also gives you negative 10 to the stat that governs your class ability, so recovery for warlocks, mobility for hunters, and resilience for titans. This mod has a lot of utility as it works for super kills, grenade kills, melee kills, and weapon kills. In all my testing, it consistently took 5 kills in any fashion to proc charge harvester. However, it only helps you to become charged with light. Once you are charged, it will not get you any more stacks. To reiterate, the only way this will proc is if you don't have any stacks of charge with light. And because there are so many other ways to become charged with light, this mod could probably be replaced by something else that is a little more consistent. Say you are using Wither Horde in an activity with lots of adds. Well, Blast Radius will give you more stacks more often, including while you are charged with light, than Charge Harvester ever will. So yes, this mod has a place, but you can probably do better depending on your build. 
The next void mod for gaining charges of light is Precision Charge. This will charge you with light for getting precision kills with bows, hand cannons, and scout rifles. It also gives you minus 10 to your strength stat. Much like the solar mod sustain charge, this one is better in low tier content where you can chew through adds with a primary. However, the downside to this one is you have to be a good shot as it only procs from rapid precision kills. It takes about 3 precision kills in fairly rapid succession to proc, so if you are a good shot and are using this with one of these 3 weapon types, then this mod may have a place. And similar to Precision Charge, the next mod has an almost identical name and is called Precisely Charged. This charges us with light from getting multiple precision funnel blows with linear fusion rifles and snipers. For my testing, it seems it just has to be 2-3 to three headshots in a row, and this gives us minus 10 to discipline. The last mod to cover is Stacks on Stacks which allows us to gain an extra stack of charge with light for every stack we gain. It also gives minus 10 to our recovery stat. So if we have Taking Charge equipped, Every time we pick up an orb of power, we will gain 2 stacks of charge with light instead of just 1. So this mod is actually quite valuable in a lot of charge with light builds. That is it for the gaining charge mods. Let's look at the consuming charge mods starting with arguably the best mod in the game for high end PvE content, Protective Light. This mod states while charge with light you gain significant damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed. This effect consumes all stacks of charge with light. The more stacks, the longer the damage resistance lasts. As well, it gives you minus 10 to your strength stat. So on screen, I am showing it proc with various stacks of charge with light. With just 1, it lasts 5 seconds. With 2, it lasts 9 seconds. With 3, it lasts 12 seconds. With 4, it lasts 15 seconds. And with 5, it lasts 19 seconds. Additionally, the timer lasts an extra second while on 0, so realistically it lasts for 1 extra second across the board. So I wouldn't recommend running this with charged up or supercharged, as 6 to 10 seconds at 1 or 2 stacks is more than enough time to get your ass to safety. This mod has saved my life countless times in Grandmaster content, and it is pretty much a must use if you plan on day 1 raiding. I can't recommend this mod enough for hard PvE content. If you are solo flawlessing a dungeon, I am sure it will save your life at least once. I highly recommend this one. The next mod we will cover is Energy Converter. This mod states while charged with light, Using your grenade attack grants you super energy, consuming all stacks of charge with light. The more stacks you have, the more energy you gain, up to a maximum of 50% of your super energy. This also gives minus 10 to discipline. So while some mods have diminishing returns, this mod has exponential returns. You don't see much when you use it with 1-3 to three stacks of charge with light, but at 4 stacks you get about a quarter of your super back, and at 5 you get just below half your super back. For this reason, it is kind of an all or nothing mod. If you are going to run this mod, you have to fully commit and run supercharged and charged up, and then spec into your super so you can try and be spamming supers to take advantage of it as much as you can. If you are using this without charged up and supercharged, you are pretty much wasting your time in my opinion. This is a very cool mod, but only good in certain situations. Additionally, the up to 50% part is important. If you are over 50% super and throw a grenade, you will not get any super energy, and it won't consume your stacks. And if you are just under 50%, it will consume your stacks, but it will only give you the energy up to 50%. The next mod is Extra Reserves, which gives a chance to drop special ammo when defeating combatants with void damage. This effect consumes all stacks of charge with light. The more stacks you have, the higher your drop chance of getting the ammo to drop. So this will work with any type of void damage, be it grenade, melee, super, or weapon damage. I found it took anywhere from 5-10 to 10 kills to get the mod to proc in my testing. This mod also gives minus 10 to intellect. This could be good in certain builds, especially double special builds, but I would argue that special finisher is just simply a better and more consistent way of getting ammo, but it does cost some super energy. As well, it is not tied to just running void weapons and subclass. And that brings us to the final mod, Surprise Attack. While charged with light, readying a sidearm will consume all stacks of charge with light and convert them into stacks of a major damage buff, which are depleted as you damage combatants with that sidearm. This mod also gives minus 10 to intellect. So what this does is depending on the amount of stacks of charge with light you have, it will give you sidearm bullets that deal 35% more damage. So 1 stack gets you 5, 2 stacks gets you 10, 3 stacks 15, 4 stacks 20, and 5 stacks 25 shots of charged magazine. What is cool is this does work with the new exotic special sidearm, Forerunner. This is a niche mod, but if you like sidearms and want to spec into them, this can be extremely strong. The other really cool thing about this mod is similar to Argent Ordnance, if you don't hit your shot it does not consume the charge magazine bullet. One final thing with this mod is that if you have a charge magazine, stow the weapon, and then pull it back out, you will lose your stacks of charge magazine. 
just something to be aware of. But that's about all you need to know. And that is going to do it for all the Void mods. These have some very good mods indeed, but every single one of them will cost you minus 10 to a certain stat. Even still, some of these are well worth running. Let's shift over to the Arc mods now and have a look at them. Once again, we'll start with the mods that help us gain stacks of Charge of Light. We'll start with Swift Charge, which allows us to become Charge of Light by rapidly defeating combatants with Pulse Rifles, Sidearms, or SMGs. Something that is common among all the Arc mods is they all have a secondary perk that can be activated if you are running another Arc Affinity mod. So the secondary perk on this mod is defeating combatants with a pulse rifle grants a chance to drop special ammo for your allies. It specifically states your allies, so it doesn't necessarily help you, which is also a common theme among the arc charge with light mods, as we will see. But back to this mod, it is very straightforward, and unlike the void mods, this does not require precision kills, just rapid multi-kills. So as usual, it is better in lower tier content where your primary weapons can chew through ads. Next, we'll look at a similar mod in Quick Charge. This mod allows us to become charged with light by rapidly defeating multiple combatants with fusion rifles or shotguns. The secondary perk is that it greatly increases the ready speed of fusion rifles, shotguns, SMGs, and swords. So here's a side-by-side -side of the perk on and the perk off, and then just the perk and the perk combined with a shotgun dexterity mod. So with no Quick Charge versus Quick Charge on a Fell Winters with Slide Shot instead of Surplus, the Quick Charge mod allows us to draw it quicker and fire a shot 6 frames faster than with no mod equipped. Now, let us see if it stacks with Shotgun Dexterity. So we'll compare the Quick Charge mod by itself, and the Quick Charge mod with Shotgun Dexterity on our gloves. And this shows that the Shotgun Dexterity and Quick Charge do stack, as it fires off a shot 4 frames faster than just having the mod equipped. Now, for fun, let's look at no mod or Dexterity versus both so that you can see the difference. And we can see that as expected, the shot fires off 10 frames quicker than when running nothing. So it is good to know that these do stack. But back to the main part of the perk of defeating multiple combatants with shotguns or fusion rifles, in my testing it consistently took 2 kills to get this to proc. So this mod is super strong if you are running something like a reservoir burst fusion rifle or even tractor cannon as it is very easy to get 2 kills with those weapons. However, this mod does cost 5 energy, but either way it is quite strong. And that is it for the arc mods that allow you to gain stacks of charge with light by yourself. Now let's look at the ones that allow us to become charged in a fire team. First up is Radiant Light. Casting your super causes nearby allies to become charged with light, and the secondary perk adds plus 20 strength. So when a teammate is near you, say 10 to 15 meters or so, and you cast your super, as long as they are running a charge with light build, they will become charged with light. What I did not know until doing this testing is that it actually gives them 2 stacks of charge with light. So that is pretty cool. The next mod is called Powerful Friends and it allows your allies to become charged with light whenever you become charged with light, if they are not already charged. If they are holding stacks of charge with light when you become charged, then it will do nothing. So it is similar to Charge Harvester in that respect. This mod also gives a plus 20 to mobility, so it is very good on hunters. The next four mods are mods that consume stacks of charge with light. We'll start with Heavy Handed. This is an expensive mod costing seven energy. While Charge with Light, regain half of your melee energy when you use a charged melee ability, consuming one stack of Charge with Light. The secondary perk is while surrounded by multiple combatants, defeating a combatant with a fusion rifle, shotgun, sidearm, or SMG adds ammo for that weapon to your reserves. So a lot going on here. First, the primary perk. This is very good for melee focused builds as it allows you great uptime on your melee ability. The secondary perk is extremely strong for shotguns and fusion rifles. If you are surrounded by enemies, you essentially will never run out of ammo. This is very strong on things like Reservoir Burst Fusion Rifles or Telesto. It does not give the ammo to your clip however, so it can't continuously proc Reservoir Burst, but it is nice for ammo efficiency. This perk does work for sidearms and SMGs too, as you can see me getting ammo back in my reserves. However, primaries now have infinite ammo, so it is not worth using for that part of the perk. Let us look at another mod that is based around melees, Striking Light. This mod states while charged with light, defeating combatants with melee damage and swords spawn one orb of power for your allies and consume one stack of charge with light. Its secondary perk is that you gain damage resistance against combatants while sprinting. I tested this at length and only ever got it to proc once. It seems kinda buggy to activate, so just be aware it may not always work. But back to the main perk of the mod, this only spawns an orb for your allies, it does not drop an orb for you, so just something to be aware of. Next, we'll look at Reactive Pulse. 
While charged with light, when you take damage while surrounded by combatants, you admit a burst of damaging arc energy, consuming one stack of charge with light. The secondary perk is you gain a powerful overshield while performing your finisher. The cool thing about the secondary perk is you do not need to be charged with light to get it to activate, so that is really cool. But the main perk that emits a burst of arc energy is highly underwhelming. I am not even taking out enemies in a freaking lost sector. It is just so damn weak. I don't know when this mod got nerfed, but I swear it used to be much better. The mod is still nice for the overshield when performing finishers, so it has some utility, but don't depend on this for survivability. Also, I tried to use this in the opening encounter of the new dungeon on Legend difficulty and was getting torn apart. I don't know if Bungie retuned the opening encounter in the latest update on January 11th, but the enemies felt like they were doing way more damage. Maybe it is because I was playing like an idiot trying to get this useless perk to proc, but it definitely felt harder. Comment down below if you think the enemies are now hitting like gambit enemies in the opening encounter of the new dungeon now. I'm very curious. But let's end on a positive note with the final arc mod and final charge with light mod overall. One of my absolute favorites, Lucent Blade. This perk states that while charged with light, dealing damage with a sword gives you bonus sword damage for 5 seconds, consuming one stack of charge with light. The secondary perk is that it greatly increases the charge rate of your equipped swords. So a couple things to note here. First, the damage bonus lasts 5 seconds on screen, but again, it stays at 0, so it actually lasts 6. Next, the damage bonus given is 35%. This is huge. Another thing to note is it does not activate until you deal damage, so don't lead off with a heavy attack as you will not get the benefit. Do one light attack and then a heavy attack. However, if you are using a vortex frame sword like the falling guillotine, you actually can lead off with a heavy attack. I did not realize this until I was testing, but my first tick of damage hits for 10,189, but all the damage numbers after hit for 13,755. I thought this was pretty cool information, and this is why I like doing testing for myself, so I can find out little tidbits just like this. As for the sword recharge rate, I will show a side by side on screen so you can see for yourself. The sword energy comes back about 1 second faster. In a long boss DPS fight, this can equate to quite a bit more damage, so a very valuable perk indeed. And that is going to do it for the video. I hope it gave you some good insight into the way these mods work. Obviously, this is subject to change with future sandbox updates, but it gives us a good idea of how these mods work for now and going into Witch Queen. If this video helped you out, then a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. I have two more guides coming out on Warmind Cell mods and Elemental Well mods. Then, I will have a huge compilation video of everything you need to know about all the mods in the game. And going forward, I plan on making guides on new mods as they come into Destiny 2. This long break between Witch Queen gave me a good chance to get caught up on all the mods that were released before I started making content. I love build crafting, so I just wanted a good baseline of what all these mods do. As well, I plan on breaking down the best artifact mods when Witch Queen releases, so definitely stay tuned for that. If you made it this far, I just want to say thank you so much for watching, and take care.